everyone, it's Annabelle. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be DIYing some reservoir gauges out of two different types of materials, either some plastic test tubes or some plastic smoothie straws. These aren't very professional, um, but they get the job done and they've been really, really helpful to me in kind of at a glance, seeing how full my reservoirs are and how I need to water as the seasons are changing because obviously you get into a routine each season but then that shift between the seasons when you need to water more can be a little bit difficult to manage for me. So the materials I'm going to be using are a pack of basic drinking straws, plastic disposable ones that I had left over from when I used to use disposable ones before obviously we got the reusable silicon ones and I never wanted to throw them away and who knew that they'd come in useful for this. These are going to be your inner float for the water level indicator polystyrene balls that I had floating around from packaging and I'm also going to be using some smoothie straws or plastic tubes as I mentioned so the smoothie straws are going to be the easiest cheapest way to do it but for a more professional look I'm also trying out some plastic tubes which require a little bit more adjusting and some extra steps but they are a little bit more long lasting and hard wearing and a little bit more reliable so also you'll need some pots, either for semi-hydro or self-watering. So I'm choosing these cute little plant pots that I found for my rupiculus lalias. Um, for self-watering, you will need two different pots. One in a pot that fits inside an outer mask. The mask should have no holes in ideally because that way you won't have any reservoir spillage if you do overfill. And you'll need to either put a larger hole in the bottom of the inner pot or have there many of them will already have holes in so I'll also be using a drill you won't need this if you're going to be using the um, smoothie straw method but if you want to use the test tube type um, you will need to put a hole in the end and also down the bottom at the sides for water to access in so obviously that's a slightly more complex method but that's the one I'm going to be doing today I'll show you the other one too you need scissors and if you want to mark a minimum and maximum mark on your reservoir gauge a black marker and a glue gun and that's pretty much it I feel like I should say be very careful with the glue gun I'm not a pro with this sort of thing um, any power tools or hot tools be very careful so I'm just going to drill first into the plastic test tube so I've put some cardboard down so I'm not drilling into the actual table this is one I prepared earlier with some little holes at the bottom for the water to access because I'm going to be gluing this to the floor and also a hole at the top because if you don't put a hole in the top the straw won't go up and down there needs to be like a hole in the top for the I think it's something to do with the pressure um, of the water movement otherwise it just doesn't work so to start with I'm just going to drill my holes obviously always recommend that you're careful when using power tools I am not a DIY expert um, please don't hurt yourself and always wear um, eye protection if possible because if the plastic does snap this is type of plastic is very easy to drill in some types of plastics aren't so it's always worth just checking and being very careful the first time you do it particularly so those are the holes that I've made I'm just going to do one at the top very very gently I'm always very careful when using power tools please be careful as well. Obviously, if you're doing the smoothie straw method, this isn't necessary at all. So maybe that's a safer and easier alternative. Um, but I just wanted to, I've got these in because I wanted to play around with materials and make my own reservoir gauges. These are the inner straws that I'm gonna be using and you just need to pop some polystyrene in there and glue gun up the ends. So to measure the length of the straw that you'll need, you want it to be level with the bottom of the pot so that when it's empty it's flush with the media and um, when it's full obviously it rises up in the reservoir gauge so if you've got a larger pot you'll want the straw to be a larger length so that's the kind of sizes that I would use for each of these different pots so I've cut my straws to size already this is one I've prepared earlier that's got the ends glued up but I'm going to be doing this to show you guys how I do it so first of all I want to get a polystyrene ball you don't need to have it as a ball you just literally need to have some polystyrene or anything very lightweight and, and long-lasting little float and trap air so that's the end result of the one I prepared earlier so I'm just going to cut some polystyrene and you want this to be larger than the size of the hole so that it will easily go in the straw um, but fits very tightly So 
So I'm just going to pop that into the straw uh, with a twisting motion and I've got a straw that I prepared earlier to tuck it in a little bit further which has been cut down the side so that it flexes inside the other straw. Just going to push that in very slightly. And then we glue gun up both ends of the straw. And then we're going to pop it inside with the polystyrene float uh, section at the bottom of the tube and we're going to glue gun the tube in place. So just to show you how I do it, literally just pop some glue into the end of the straw and make sure that it seals around the outside as well. And then to stop it from any strings, I usually just wipe it off on the straw. Then I wait for it to cool a little bit so that it's not hot anymore. And then just, while it's still flexible, just smooth it over so it won't catch on the sides at all. Now I'm going to glue the test tubes down to the bottom of the pot and this is going to be a semi-hydro pot which is why I'm gluing it to the bottom like this. If you're doing self-watering then you might just want to glue it into the plastic inner. You don't even need to do that, you can have it free floating and the media will hold it in place. So I'm just carefully gluing around the rim and I know that this is off camera but I'm going to show you a few more as well. And just stick that down and immediately flick the straw up so that the straw doesn't get stuck to any glue. Uh, in future I'll be probably putting them straight up. So just gluing around the side and then just sticking it to the edge of the base of the pot. And I'm just going to maintain that tipped so that the straw doesn't have any chance of getting stuck to the glue at the bottom because that would, would need to start again then. And these do quite easily pull off as well, that's a point to make. So we can adjust these later if, if there's any problems or if you're changing pots, these will just pull off. Um, so the glue obviously isn't a permanent seal, which is kind of ideal for what we want because we can always change our setups around that way. It's got more flexibility, but it's going to be long wearing enough to do the job for what we want it for. So I'm just going to try and do this one a little bit more on camera. Again, I'm not a pro DIYer, so this is just kind of, I thought it might be useful to share. A couple of you guys requested um, that I do a video on it. So I've switched all my Oncidiums into various different setups that have reservoir gauges now and it is making my life a lot easier so uh, I thought I'd share it with you guys. So that's all stuck down so I'm just going to leave them to dry off and harden before I fill in with media. Um, first of all we're going to test off what the level looks like with the flushing holes that I've already drilled into this pot because we want the max level to be where the flushing holes are so that I don't get any overfilling and spillage. So now that those are all dried off, I'm going to get some water in and check my levels so we can mark a minimum and a maximum. Um, you don't really need to do this if you kind of are confident and know, but it's just a, a nice um, visual indicator of when when is too full basically, so you don't overfill and have water spilling out from the pot, um, but also when it's empty so that you never have it running dry. And this might be slightly different for each straw, uh, it might have a different float point, so it is worth just double checking this. Possibly depending on where you put the polystyrene or how below the water level it tends to float. So the maximum level I'm marking as just below the flushing holes in this pot, if you can see, that's right up to the flushing holes. So I'm marking that as my maximum point. And that way I don't have any trays lining my shelves. So if I overfill, what happens is water spills down onto the orchids below. At some point I would like to get some 
trays. Um, but the problem is if you get solid ones, they block any light filtering down and I quite like having an accumulative effect with my lights where the lower shelves get a little bit of light filtering down from above as well. So that's my maximum point. And then our, we know that from before that our minimum point when they're empty is where they're level with the top of the pot. So you can either mark that or you kind of just know that. So when there's no water in them, they sit level with the top of the pot, the little straws inside. And those are my little DIY reservoir gauges all done. Um, so that is with the test tubes. What I do mainly is use the straws because that offers greater flexibility. Um, the reason I've done the test tubes for these is because they fitted perfectly with this pot. I bought them to try out and they actually look nicer and better. Um, and they're going to not have any risk of you sloshing water inside the, um, inside the reservoir indicator. Which may not be a problem, but also if some gets inside the straw it will affect your float level. Which is why I now seal both ends of the straw with the glue. So this is just another idea for using the plastic straws instead of the test tubes for another semi-hydro setup. So I've sealed both ends of the straw with glue. It's got polystyrene in one bit and that's going to be the bit that sits in the base of the reservoir. And the minimum is obviously level with the top of the pot. So to do this, the smoothie straws have a like a V-shaped base. So I'm just gonna cut a couple of slits up the side and cut the base off so that I can easily glue the base to the base of the pot. So the slits up the side are for water to get in and obviously the straw already has an open top so we don't have to worry about drilling or making any pressure um, levels. So those are the bits for the water to access in the bottom. And then just glue that down to the base in the same way. The straw has already been plugged. And just to check that that works again, I'm just gonna fill that up with water. I haven't drilled the flushing holes on this pot yet, so I'll drill the flushing holes in line with the water reservoir. And that works. So those are my kind of DIY reservoir gauges that I'm using at the moment, using either smoothie straws, cheap inner straws. Um, I had loads of the cheap inner ones lying around um, because I used to use them a lot before I switched over to the reusable silicone types and I just repotted all of my rupiculous lelias into these pots so that because I was having issues with them drying out very quickly now that the seasons are changing in the cups that they were in. Um, they had great root systems. I'm really happy with them in the ceramis mixes and I have filmed that separately. And there you go, that shows you maximum level so I'm not going to overfill and accidentally get any water in any orchids that are sitting on shelves below. And obviously the minimum level when they're running dry, so I know if they're running dry in between my waterings, I usually do a weekly to two weekly watering. It's two weeks every winter, as the season change it kind of gets to a sort of week and a half watering. And in summer it tends to be that I need to water every week but this just lets me know how they're doing and if I need to water or if I don't need to water. I hope that that's actually been useful for you guys and that my home DIY reservoir gauge tutorial um, was relatively easy to follow and just gave you some ideas. You probably need to adapt based on the materials that you have available in your area and what I will do is pop some links down below of all the materials I've used and I will try and find some other regional links as well. Thanks so much for watching today and if you did enjoy this video don't forget to give it a like or subscribe to my channel for more regular orchid updates and I'll see you guys all later. Bye!